welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you somebody that, in full transparency, I got to work with years ago. I'm not going to say specifically how many years ago, but we got to work together. And I've I've been a follower of, of this person for many years just because she's always been an inspiration to me. And so here I am. I get a chance to speak to none other than Amy Abdallah. Y'all give it up for Amy. How exciting was that? I can hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you hear your fan club clapping for yeah. you. It's pretty exciting. We'll, we'll let them die down a little bit. Okay, and, very uh, good. Amy, I'd love for you to share us, with us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Um, well, again, my name is Amy Abdallah. Um, and most recently, I'm now actually Amy Abdallah Vandiver. Um, got married uh, for the very first time. How many people say that um, a, a year ago? And so I have a very, super long last name. Um, but uh, my background has always been in the human space. Um, mm -hmm. So I've always done learning and development. That's kind of always been my focus. That's where I met you, Gary. Um, mm -hmm. And so started out um, doing learning and development in the multifamily space. Um, and uh, and I worked in that uh, in that industry for several years. Um, and you know, one of the things that people kept telling me, I was good at what I did, and that I was effective at what I did. And so I was like, you know, what would be interesting, and what might make me dangerous, is if I understood the science behind what I was doing, Ooh. right? Yeah. And so I said, okay, maybe there's a master's degree out there uh, that is associated with what I'm doing. Um, and so I looked into it and there was a, a master's degree at the University of Houston for human resource development. Yeah, go Cougs, right? For human resource development. And so I, uh, in 2006, while I was still uh, working for the company that we, we worked for, um, I, uh, I started my master's degree and I finished in 2008, uh, just in time for the economy to tank, right? Mm, right. Um, and so here I am, I'm smarter, I'm more dangerous, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm well equipped with the, the things that I need. Um, and there was nowhere internally for me to go. And so I decided to spread my wings. Um, I went and led the learning and development function for another multifamily company for a short period of time. Um, and then uh, I had an opportunity to, um, to go to an even bigger company uh, and learn and do I'm sorry, the director of learning and development for them. And then I moved on to talent development for another company. And now I am, um, I'm what's called an HR advisor Ooh. Um, with a focus on talent development, recruitment, the full life cycle um, of the human experience at work. That's wow. Kind of what I do. Um, and so I'm now in the energy industry okay. um, and, uh, and I, on the 20th floor with a really nice view so nice that is kind of nice i was i was looking behind you looking at that view that was that wouldn't be a terrible place to go to every day yeah it's um, not a corner <laughs> office but it is an office with hey a you got a nice view all good <laughs> you know amy i love that you talk about you've always been in the human space and i think that's r what really sets you apart and elevates your perspective and the inspiration that comes from you is because you recognize the things that you do, no matter what that title is or what that role is or whatever the industry is, you're in that human space to help encourage and, and you know develop people in some capacity through a life cycle, as you mentioned. And so, Amy, so I've always been inspired by you and I would love to connect with inspiring leaders and just take a peek behind the curtain to see what inspires these inspiring leaders. And so I reached out to you and I was like, Amy, what inspires you? You sent back some great stuff. So I can't wait to talk about some of these things that you shared with me. And the first one, which I kind of resonates with me is you said you're a nerd. Um, so Total. welcome to welcome to the club. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> um, and I love that you talk about when you learn a new concept, you just don't take it at face value. You like to dig in. So tell us what that means to you and why are you a nerd and why do you like to dig into new concepts and how does that inspire you? I, th I think one of the things that I have a knack for is, is translation of data into relevant information for me. Mm. 
Um, and so I, as I was thinking about, you know, that I, that I told you that, I'll give you an example, okay? Um, long story short, I went to a, um, I went to a seminar on, on design thinking. Have you ever heard of it? Mm -mm. It's very interesting, but I'm going to keep it real simple, okay? Design thinking originated in, um, in the tech space. Mm -hmm. So people who are developing, developing software um, use design thinking to create a better user experience, end user experience, wow. okay, UX. Um, and so everybody thinks design thinking is all about customer experience, customer experience, right? Well, I was like, okay, I see this as relevant to who's my customer and that is our employees, mm. right? So taking that very, very cool concept of design thinking um, that is meant for the tech space or meant for customers and saying, how can I apply this to our employee experience, right? Yeah. That's an example of doing that. And so design thinking, I, I wrap it up into like two little words. What sucks <laughs> and how can we get rid of it? Right. What's awesome and how can we replicate it? Ooh. And if you can identify those things, right? Yeah. What's, a, what's a bad experience for our employees and how can we minimize that? Mm -hmm. And what's a great experience for our employees and how can we replicate that in different areas? Ooh, that's good. We, uh, we have a better chance of, of higher engagement and retention. That's fantastic. And, and I love, Amy, how you talk about that, you know, it's, you tr you're translating things. So there's some, that's an incredible concept that was initially meant for the tech space, the design thinking. Mm -hmm. And yet your curiosity, your, your nerd nerdiness yes. said, you know, Hey, I want to dig into this and figure out how can I translate this design thinking that's meant for the tech space into something that I can use in, in, in my world. And you've done that with mm -hmm. creating a conversation or a topic of saying, okay, what's good, what's bad. You know, I know you're breaking it down very, very simply, but you're, you're, you're translating that into something that is of value to you and your customers, which are your team members. Yeah. That is pretty awesome. That, that is well, inspiring. And to take it even a little bit further, um, one of the, one of the other concepts that comes from that particular, uh, seminar is something called the customer journey. Okay. So if you think about even just being a customer, call it McDonald's right um yeah. and you're gonna go in and you're gonna go in and have a burger right you yeah. go to the parking lot you walk in the door you stand in line you have seating all of those points of contact uh mm. in that journey uh however short it is have an opportunity to make or break your experience right Ooh. and so uh so when i look at the customer journey i say okay what's the employee journey right we hire people and we paint that we are the greener grass, right? They're leaving yeah. another company and they're coming to us. Mm -hmm. And so during the interview process and the recruiting process, of course, they're pumped up. Of course, they're excited, right? They're, uh, they're excited to get this new offer and come work for this great company that we have just boasted about. Right. And then they come and work for us and they have a journey, right? They have a journey. And if that journey maybe has an experience with accounts payable and it stinks, that's one of those little pain points that can mm. give a person pause yeah. and say, did I make the right decision? Right? So the thing is, is that the employee journey, we have to implore upon our leaders and, and everybody, you are part of everybody's employee journey. Yeah. And you have the opportunity to make it or break it. Yeah. Right. Um, so anyway, all right, I'll stop talking about design thinking. and No, that's that. fantastic. I mean, what a great concept and, and the fact that you're able to kind of like just translate it into, again, your world. And then, you know, that customer journey, like the McDonald's or you go to the grocery store, you go to a resale store. It's all those points of contact that create the journey and you tra and you're, you're translating it into, you know, your associate, your team member's journey and all of us that connect with a team member is a point within their journey mm -hmm. make or break good or bad that's it's yep. valuable it's valuable so i love that how you're really digging into that and making it of value not only to you but to, to everyone that encounters you know this this translation of design thinking into your company yeah so good so good all oh, right so you're excited 
I am. I love. I love this. In fact, I wrote down design thinking. I'm going to go research that after our conversation here. So I'm excited about learning something. See, it's the nerdiness. It's just that. like learn new stuff so of course that's cool so the other thing you shared with me is teaching other people new concepts to help them get there so tell us what that means to you and how does that inspire you well kind of like what we just did here right mm -hmm. um and and so one of the again you asked me what inspires me and so one of my favorite things and and probably gosh jerry since before you and i met was watching aha moments happen Right. Yeah. I, I love that. And, and again, I, I, I do have a little bit of a knack for taking the complex and making it simple. And so when I can do that, um, successfully for people to where they now are able to connect the dots between what they're learning and the yeah. implications of that learning on their own situation and have that aha moment that absolutely, that, oh, yeah. that's, that's my juju. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree with you when you when you because when, if you're standing up in front of a person or multiple people and you're you're sharing concepts or ideas or thoughts or process and you see their eyes get big and they have mm -hmm. that moment of aha that's a gift it is it is and it's uh it's the warm that's the warm fuzzy that really just kind of keeps me doing what I do yes um, you, you know the other thing I shared with you is there is no better feeling than having a conversation with somebody that I deem to be a very brilliant person in their own right. Mm -hmm. And I am surrounded by some very brilliant people in the oil and gas industry. I will tell you that. I bet. Um, and, uh, and when I have a conversation with somebody, I break something down for them mm -hmm. and teach them a concept and they're taking notes. I'm like, <laughs> I am just patting myself on the back right. <laughs> and not in a way that I'm, it's just like, yes, you did it. You did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's, what, what a great feeling. Cause I mean, you're speaking something and they're finding such value in it that they're mm -hmm. like, I need to write this down. Yes. Yes. And you're like, wow, that's, that's pretty neat. That is a good pat on the back. Yeah. You know? Intrinsic yeah. pat on the back. That's, that's, that's a great feeling. But you know, on the same, on the flip side, mm -hmm. um, I'm a, I'm a consummate note taker as well. Mm -hmm. People teach me things all day long. Um, and so, gosh, I don't know if I can sh see my whiteboard. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And now I probably screwed up the camera for the rest of the interview. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. And I did. This is an action packed, uh, episode. Right. There we go. <laughs> um, anyway, so so I, I'm constantly taking notes. I'm constantly looking for uh, inspiration from other people and uh, and and seeing how that inspiration can translate into my world. Oh yeah, that's dark. That's okay. Yeah, we're we're feeling it. We, you know, we can. No, I agree with you. I think you know. There's if you are listening and you have that awareness to take notes from other people because there's so much value that you can pull from. And like you said, good and bad, what works, what doesn't work. And if you're taking these notes, you're just, you're creating a, a library, if you will, yeah. of great things. Yeah. And there's truly a lot of value in that. And then the other neat thing is just as much as you get excited about people taking notes of what you say, when other people see you take notes, it's like, hey, this person values me because, yeah. you know, the things that I'm sharing, they feel is valuable enough to take notes. So that's, you know, you know what, you just taught me something, Gary. What's that, ma'am? even if I don't need to take notes, that is a, that is a body language trick. Oh yeah. To make somebody, just think about that, right? Yeah. It's a body language trick to increase a engagement from the person that you are listening to. Yeah. But also demonstrate that I respect what they are saying. It's like active listening. That's a yeah. that's an active listening approach. That's a really good trick. Look, we just taught each other something. That's cool. See, this is why I have these conversations because we <laughs> learn so many things from each other. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love that. Well, you know, so the, the last thing that you talked about with me uh, or shared with me that inspires you is you get super jazzed. I love that word. Um, any anything that starts with super, I get it. That's, a, <laughs> that's my that's my word. But when you share ideas um, and, and people who consider to be brilliant take notes, and we, you talked about that, those aha moments, those notes are so good. And then you went on to talk about your your language, your love language. That's exciting. Yeah. I love 
you know, there's a love language and there's an appreciation language. And right. you shared that, you know, your love language is acts of service, but your appreciation language is words of affirmation. So tell us that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of stick to work here in this, this uh, conversation. So words of affirmation, how does that, what does that mean to you and how do these words inspire you? You know, I've, I've developed some real self-awareness over the last many years, right? Um, through behavioral testing and personality testing and coaching and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and what I've come to find is um, I do not need a gold star on my door. I mm -hmm. don't need um, I don't need somebody to come and put a plaque on my desk. Um, I don't. I, I, I just need somebody every once in a while to say you are you are doing just, a bang up job. It's not That's what it. you wrote to me. Well, I, I, I actually put a curse word on yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I and you know, a lot of times people are like, OK, but be specific about it. You know, it's sometimes I don't need specifics because yeah. I'm aware of what I've accomplished. Sure. And, and what somebody's talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, you know, I don't need the empty high five in the hallway. I need someone to pull me aside and say, you are doing a great job. Yeah. That's, that, that is my, 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 my language at work is definitely that. That's awesome. And, and it's amazing how a word or two or a phrase can fill your bucket. And then that in turn gives you energy to do the things you need to do. And when your cup is full, your bucket is full, then you can go in turn, you can go around and fill other people's buckets. Right. And, you know, and, and I love how you talk about love languages or appreciation languages. And there's a whole nother conversation associated with that. <clears throat> but knowing what your love language is or your appreciation language is, you can share that with your supervisor. So you can say, hey, you know what? If you want to inspire me, here's how to do it. Right. And if your supervisor has that nugget of wisdom or that tool in their tool belt, they know how to connect with you and how to engage with you. And so they may simply say, OK, you know what, Amy's Amy may have had a rough day, but I know now, you know, that I'm aware I've got this tool in my belt and I can say, hey, Amy, you're doing a kick butt job. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's such a value in having self-awareness and also sharing that with your supervisor and your supervisor having the awareness of that to encourage and inspire your their team members. Yeah. It's massive. Yeah. Amy, it, this has been fantastic chatting with you. I, I, you know, I've learned, I've taken notes. Um, and that's why I love to have these conversations. And I know the people that listen to these conversations learn from it as well. So I know they're going to be taking notes um, just because they've learned some great things from you. But before we wrap up, because we're getting at the end of our time, okay. I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Oh, man. <laughs> You know, I, I honestly, I mean, closing thought, uh, if, if I'm talking to your listeners and I'm, I would say this, um, never, never miss out on an opportunity to learn something new. I mean, we get stale when we are existing with the same information we've always had, right? Um, and uh, learn something new, but then challenge yourself to say, what are the implications of this new thing on yeah. my life and how can I do something different as a result? I love that. I love that. If, and if I was to translate it, break it down for me, I would say be a nerd and translate it to help yourself and help others. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, this has been fantastic. I love connecting with you and learning and being inspired by you. And so thank you so much for sharing with us and being a part of the Super Fantastic Exchange. Guys, if you get a chance to connect with Amy on LinkedIn or if you see her wherever, man, make it your point to connect with her because she's an incredible leader. And I promise you, money back guarantee, you will be inspired Aww. by her. So thank you again, Amy. I appreciate you being on the episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. And we will see you on the next episode. Thank y'all. Thank you.